go. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I'm so excited because, believe it or not, you guys are the first ones to see my kitchen. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. I, I'm not sure if some of you I've seen before in other classes or not. I can't see everybody. Um, but some of you, for those of you who don't know, I do have a YouTube channel, Green Olive Cooking Channel at, um, at YouTube. And so a couple, two months ago, I think I told everyone I was going to be off for two weeks because I was having a kit my kitchen remodeled, uh, a new studio. And two weeks have actually has gone to two months. So we just finished uh, this week. We have a few more things to do, but for the most part, I think it's done. So, so nobody's even seen this yet except you guys. You guys are the first one. So yay. I hope you guys like the kitchen. <laughs> so since it's it, it is the first time um, I'm using it, hopefully uh, we won't have too many hiccups along the way. Um, I do have some more cameras and things to install in here, but for today, this is um, the best that we've got, which is going to be awesome. You know so thanks interesting everybody for coming. Lucia, what's interesting, I know this is our first run with your equipment, is when you're talking, it's not matched to what's coming out. So oh. we'll, have, we'll have to look at that. So I don't know if that's going to be weird for you guys, but you can still hear her. Um, so Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so that's one of the main reasons that I moved into this studio. Where I lived before the audio was not great, and we moved here because the Wi-Fi was fabulous. Okay, well, uh, you're cutting. What that issue is. Um, okay, I was just muting some people. You were cutting out, but I wasn't sure if it was from you. Go ahead, continue. Sorry. Yeah, so I was just going to say that was the main reason I actually moved my studio here is for the Wi-Fi because where I lived, I couldn't get it. So the fact that there's an issue with that, we'll have to figure that out. So I apologize, but bear with me. You guys are all going to still learn how to make gnocchi at the end of uh, this hour and a half together. So so any, any gnocchi experts that I have out there or are you guys all new with this? No? Okay. All right. So I have never taught gnocchi virtual so um i hope i'm hoping that you guys will be able to to pick up the skill it's pretty easy to make um so hopefully you guys will be able to see everything that i'm going to be doing but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start making our sauce because it needs some time to cook and so while the sauce is cooking then we'll actually uh, make the the noodles and or the dough and and roll them out and everything so so to start um let's get our saute pan heated up And we want to add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to our saute pan. Maybe you can show my saute pan. And this is a brand new stove for me, so I'm cooking on it for the first time. So I'm not sure how long it takes to heat up. Anyway, once we have our um, olive oil in the uh, saute pan, go ahead and add these uh, chopped onions. And you want to add about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of salt. And that's just going to start to uh, get the onions to sweat. And then you just want to stir until they start sauteing. Now you can switch over to the big one. So one of the things about um, the uh, mirepoix, which is the onions, carrots, and celery that we're going to start cooking, you can make them any size you want. You can do big chunks, you can do tiny chunks. It just depends what the outcome of your sauce is gonna be. If you want chunky sauce, then I would probably dice them in small pieces. If you are gonna puree your sauce, then you can just go ahead and chop them in big pieces because they're all gonna go in the blender and get pureed after anyway. So, so that's up to you about how small or large you want your dice pieces. Okay. Okay, so after our onions have sauteed for a minute or two, we can go ahead and add um, our carrots. And we want to get that sauteing a little bit. And we're basically doing a very traditional, it's either a mirepoix in French or sofrito in Italian. It's kind of the holy grail of cooking. A lot of times at night when I don't know what I'm going to cook, I always start 
with this holy grail of ingredients because they're very aromatic. They add a lot of flavor to dishes and you can do so much with them. So again, it's the onions, the carrots and the celery. I hope you guys poured yourself some wine also and you're drinking some good red wine while we're cooking. Any red wine glasses? There we go. Yes, yes, we are. Yay, yay, <laughs> yay. Awesome. I should have brought some myself, I forgot. Okay. All right, and then you could probably add your um, celery and your chopped garlic. Now, one of the things about the chopped garlic, you always want to kind of add it after you've added some of the other ingredients because it's so delicate. You don't want it to fry in that oil right away. So if it's sitting on top of the other vegetables, chances are it will not um, burn. And we don't want that to burn because it'll become bitter. Now, if you're someone who's maybe trying to watch your, um, your oil, your fat intake, one of the things you can do instead of uh, starting with olive oil, you can just start with some onions. And as soon as they start to saute, you can add a little bit of liquid. And that could be a, a tablespoon or two of water, broth, wine, whatever you want. And that will also help with that cooking process as well. So that's one thing you can do if, if you are trying to cut back on your fat. You don't have to start with the olive oil and you'll still get that same result. Especially if you use a broth or a wine, it'll it'll give flavor to the dish also. So, okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? Are we doing good? Thumbs up, everybody. Yeah. Okay. I can't see everybody. But I'm, I'm, watching. I'm doubling the recipe because I didn't want to waste all my herbs the oil as well or maybe not no you don't really need to double the oil it should be fine but that's smart that's what i would do too i always do double batch because you can always freeze it and use it for other things so we just want to saute this for a few minutes it's just now finally coming to a sizzle And um, we are gonna add tomato sauce to this. So there's a couple different um, things you can do. You can add a puree like that's in this jar. You can add canned, that's uh, whole peeled or cubed or crushed, a can crushed if you want. Or you can even add fresh tomatoes from the garden. It really doesn't matter what type of tomato you add. It's, it's whatever you like and whatever you have on hand. And also it's your preference. If you like it smooth, then you might want more of a passata like this or a sauce. If you like it chunky, you could do the um, whole peeled tomatoes and chunk them yourself or the garden tomatoes, wh whatever you prefer. That's the wonderful thing about cooking is it's, these are just guidelines to follow, but whatever you prefer, kind of make it your own recipe, your own dish, which is wonderful because there's no rules in that. I'm just gonna let mine sweat for a little bit more because it's just starting to come to heat. How about you guys? Is it just starting or has it been? Same, we need to wait a bit longer. Okay, all right, good. But I'm free to answer any questions while we wait and enjoy your wine. Mm. I feel bad, I didn't even think about bringing wine. Shame on me. Mm. What kind of an Italian am I? <laughs> Sorry, you, you hadn't said to add the herbs yet, yet, have you? No, no, the herbs we're gonna add at the very end, only because herbs are really delicate and you just wanna add them at the end because there's enough heat that it can extract those essential oils, which that's what gives you the flavor. Because if you add them too early in the beginning, sometimes uh, they end up burning and they could taste bitter depending on the herbs. So I like to just put them in at the end. Okay, thank you. The other thing I did too, um, there was some um, uh, celery leaves on the end of the celery stalk that I had. And so I just chopped those up fine and I'm gonna add those at the end as well. And it just gives more flavor. Sometimes I'll even add parsley if I have it on hand, but, um, but I did save the celery flowers for the end as well. 
I thought I'd mention that now just in case I end up throwing them in at the end. Like, what was that herb? So, sorry, did you add the tomatoes already or no? No, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> Sautéing and waiting. But if your vegetables are all sautéed and nice and hot and they've been sautéing for three, four minutes, you can add your sauce. I was just waiting because mine weren't quite there yet. And I think a, a couple other people, it wasn't there yet also. So I'm probably going to give mine one more minute and then I will add my tomato sauce. What should we have at, what temperature should the stove be at? Um, I would cook anywhere from um, a medium to medium high. I wouldn't cook high, high. Um, Especially if you're cooking with olive oil, it's not good to cook olive oil at a very high temperature. It's not really made for that. It's more for medium high. And you don't want to burn uh, your food, especially if you're not standing over it watching it all the time. So, but I think a medium high would, would be suffice. And if you find that um, your vegetables are um, caramelizing a little bit on the pan. Uh, don't add more olive oil. That's not necessarily necessary. Um, if you want, you can add a little bit of water, liquid broth or wine if you're worried. Or at that point, that's a good sign where it's re you're ready to actually add your tomato sauce. So I'm gonna add my um, tomato sauce. Go ahead and add the whole, bottle, whole jar. I was just looking like, I just looked to see the size. It's a little, uh, it's a little under what the recipe says. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to lower mine to low because it's pretty hot and it's splattering. We don't want that. And so because there is sauce in my tomato jar, I actually like to add a little water to it. And that'll kind of rinse out my jar and It'll kind of thin out the sauce a little. I like it a little bit more on the thin side than the thick side, but if you like thick, then don't worry about it. But as it cooks, it will start to, um, to thicken because that water will evaporate in the cooking process. All right, so at this point, we just want this to cook until all the vegetables are soft and then it's the perfect time right now that we can start making our pasta. So. If you um, want to turn your oven to more of a low, and if you need to cover it, so. You mean your stove? Lucia, we lost you. We don't have sound. Okay, there. No, I can't hear you. No. Oh, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay, Wait. good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what happened. It's like, I don't know, it turned off on its own or something. Does it need okay. to be charged? No, it's at 70%. Okay. It says. Okay. So I got plenty. Yeah, I made sure I charged it all and everything too. So sorry about that. Okay, um, now we're gonna get our um, pasta ready. Take my rings off here. Now is gnocchi considered pasta? Yes. Well, it is a form of one of the many pastas. Yes, it is a pasta. Um, so traditionally gnocchi is made with potatoes. Um, sometimes I will make it with half potatoes, half ricotta. Um, it, it's a little bit more lighter. It's not as heavy with straight potatoes. We're going to do straight regatta, not the potatoes, um, which you can do that, or you can also do it with a squash if you wanted to puree some kind of a squash or do a combination of squash and potatoes or squash and regatta. There's so many different versions that you can do of this. Um, so whatever your imagination, just go ahead and do that. Um, the thing with the potatoes is that then you need a potato ricer which looks like a huge garlic press if you've never seen it. And you need to make sure that your potatoes are pureed as best as they can, because you don't want any chunks in your, um, your, your pasta when you make it. So we're starting with our uh, ricotta and we've drained it. Hopefully you guys drained your ricotta. 
And then we're gonna add our um, spinach that was um, drained with all the excess water. And the reason it's important to drain everything, and we're just gonna kind of mix all this up. The reason it's important to drain everything, because if you don't, um, you're gonna end up adding a lot more flour and, and working more flour in that it could make the, the dough really tough. So you wanna try to relieve as much water out of the spinach and the ricotta that you possibly can. And so we're just gonna mix this up. And you can chop the spinach even finer if you wanted to, but to me, it's, it's fine. It's good enough. Okay, let's get our recipe here. All right, so we are gonna add a teaspoon of salt to this. And we're gonna add a half, quarter cup of Parmesan cheese that we've grated. And then once you have it all pretty much well incorporated, the cheese and the salt, we can start adding the flour. And so I would start adding the flour like half a cup at a time. So I'm just gonna add half a cup to this mixture. And I'm just working in the bowl for right now. And you just wanna press and get all that uh, mixture mixed in with the flour. And then when you feel like the flour is mixed in well enough, then just go ahead and add another half a cup, or I'm sorry, pour, yeah, half a cup. And if you wanted to use your hands, you can. But at this point, I still like to use the spatula. Okay, you know what, I think I'm gonna move this over here so they can kind of see. Sure, yep, good right there? Right there, uh-huh. Okay, perfect. All right, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Just mixing this up. And now I'm probably at this point, because it's kind of all crumbly, I'm going to uh, put it on my bench. So Lucia, currently you've just added one cup of flour, is that correct? Yes. And the recipe calls for one and one half. It does. Okay. And uh, so I'm, I'm reserving this last half to see how much I need. So now, now that I've got it on the bench, I, now I'm gonna start working it with my hands and kind of bringing it together so it forms like a ball. And you'll see some of this is falling apart. We'll just bring it in and just work it in the dough and keep working this. And so when you work your dough, you push it forward towards you, half, fold it in half forward. And using the heel of your hands, you push away. Lucia, you give it a quarter turn. Yes. I'm going to have you slow down. Um, and let, I want to check in and see where everybody's at. Are you guys ready for this okay. part of it? I think they're still mixing. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm still mixing in some flour. Okay. Okay. So everybody should be mixing one cup of flour into your ricotta and spinach mixture. And then we're reserving the other half cup of flour for later. So do that. And when you're done with that, then Lucia will show you how to um, bring it together. Did you put any flour on the board? I haven't, no, because I dumped everything from my pot to the board and there was flour. So for right now, I didn't, but that doesn't mean I don't. If you want to put a little flour, you can. It'll probably be fine. Hey, Lucia, might adding a little red wine to our uh, sauce here, would that be uh, something that might be advantageous? Yeah, go right ahead. That's perfect. Good. Nice call. Yeah, thanks. How, how sticky are we looking for the dough or should it not be? So it should not be very sticky. Um, I was just waiting for everyone to get ready for this next step. Are we, do you think Lori we're ready to move on or? Um, no, no, let's give it, let's give it a couple minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. For yeah, those of you who are ready, working. hold tight. Thank you. 
here. Okay. Can you let me do real quick and turn this off? Oh, oh, what happened? No. Oh, I had to reset my camera. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's, I have, it's really weird, this camera, and if anybody out there knows the answer, <laughs> it's a Canon, and I've disabled the auto to uh, not turn off, but it seems like after 30 minutes, no matter what, it turns off. So I thought, since we're going to be doing an overhead, I thought, let me reset it so it doesn't turn off in the middle of the overhead. <laughs> Okay. It's a it's a quirky thing. All right. So looks like is everybody ready? Um, pipe in if you want us to wait. Ready. Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. So when you're working with your dough, there is a way to to work the dough. So you want to fold it in half towards you, and using the bottom of the heels of your hands, you want to push away not down but away and then you quarter turn fold and push away again and the reason you want to push away if you want to think of it as like taking a piece of paper and crumpling it up and throwing it in the trash and then you realize oh i didn't mean to do that you pull the paper out and what do you do you like push out the wrinkles well you're doing the same with the this flour because there's gluten in it and there's two um, proteins in the flour, gliadine and glutamine, and they're very curly in structure and they don't sit well together. So we need to get these two curly structures to kind of come together and lay flat. And the only way to do that is to push out and that gets those structures to lay together and create a soft dough. So as you're doing this, if you notice you're sticking on your board, just go ahead and add more flour and then just keep rolling. The goal is it to maybe be slightly tacky but not super sticky. And so what's gonna vary, and that's why I wanted you to only start with a cup of flour, because you might not need the full cup and a half, or you could possibly need two cups. It just depends how much you have let your ricotta and your spinach drain and be, you know, get all that extra water out. The more water that's in there, the more flour you're gonna need. So you might, like I said, you might not need the full cup and a half and you might need more. It just all depends. So add it as you need it. And just keep working your dough until it's nice and smooth. So mine's tacky again. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour. And you just want to keep doing this process. Fold in half, push away, quarter turn. Fold in half, push away, quarter turn. Anybody having any problems with that? Need some guidance or help? So this is a good workout. Work those upper arms. It's good. I didn't go to the gym yesterday. Shame on me. All right. So I think my dough is pretty ready. As you can see, I didn't use all my flour. I still have a little bit left, but that's okay. But I don't want you to get hung up on it as far as is it sticky enough is it not because we're going to be adding more flour to this as we actually get ready to roll out our gnocchi so i'm going to stop at this point i'm going to wait for you guys to, er to everybody get at this point uh give your sauce a quick little stir check on it just in case um make sure it's okay and then as soon as um everybody has their dough rolled out I'm gonna show you how to roll the gnocchi and I wanna make sure everybody watches this part. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask me. You doing okay, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. okay. So 
it looks like Lucia, the dough should not be sticky. It's very slightly, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I can tell what, you, you just don't want it sticking to your hands. No, yeah, see, I'm doing this and it's not sticking. It's a little tacky, but it's not like coming up that it's sticky, if that makes sense to you guys. Also, if you have some time, go ahead and take a uh, sheet pan and add some flour to it because we're going to add our gnocchi um, onto that as we roll them. Anybody have any questions? You guys still doing okay? Is everybody ready? Yep. Ready? Okay. Okay. So now that we have our ball of dough, um, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. Traditionally, um, probably you've seen where they've taken a piece of the dough and then they roll it out like this. Now just watch for right now. And then what they do is they just go ahead and cut it. And you cut it in, I don't know, one inch, half inch pieces. Can I, whoops, there we go. Try, I gotta do opposite of what this, so very small pieces. That's one way of doing it. And another way, and I'll let you decide which way you wanna do it. My grandmother, she just kind of flattens it out like this. And I'm gonna add some flour here. And you need a lot of flour. So at this point, I just throw a whole bunch of flour on top. And she just cuts it. Doesn't even roll, it just leaves it like this. And again, I'm just gonna throw some flour on here because I don't want it to stick. And then she just cuts it at this point. To me, this is easier because there's no point taking the time to roll it because you're just going to basically take this and reshape it. So whether you shape it twice or shape it once, you end up with the same shape. So I like to do it the second way that I showed you and just uh, work like this. So once I have it cut, again, add some flour because when you cut, the side is moist. You want to make sure you kind of mix them up in the flour like this so they're not sticky. And then you need to roll them. And so there's, um, technically you need a gnocchi board, which is this right here. I don't know if you guys have a gnocchi board. Um, you don't have to. Summer, uh, let me interrupt. Summer, did you have a question? Yeah, what, what, what like diameter are we looking? Like how big should we have these pieces when we're cutting them? It's really hard. You know what? It's really whatever you want. Um, so here's a piece and here's my finger so you can see, get a, an, an idea. But the key here is not that it has to be this size. The key is that they all have to be the same size. So they cook the same. So they could be smaller than this. They could be even a little bigger than this. That's fine. But somewhere around here is, is fine. Can you so when we, we roll a dough out, like how thick should it be when we're cutting off sections to start? That's that's fine like that, yeah. And just cut, okay. I don't know, a half inch or okay. so. And then cut it maybe a quarter inch or you could do a half by half, that's fine. But just make sure they're all the same size. Because if they're not, you're gonna have some that are gonna be raw, some that are gonna be mushy when they cooked. We just want them to be all about the same size. Perfect. So if, you, if you have a gnocchi board, and I don't know, does anybody have a gnocchi board? 
No? Okay. Well, let me just show you this real quick if you decide you want to invest in one. Um, it has little grooves in it. I usually put some flour on, on here. You take the gnocchi with your finger and you just roll it and it falls off the board. Very simple. <clears throat> it makes a little, um, let me see here. It makes a little groove indentation here. Can you pull back, uh, Lucia? Go it, back? It's, okay. it's really blurry when you get oh, okay. close. I never know how close to get. Um, pull back, uh, go down. Uh, okay, it's, yeah. Is that good? Yeah, I think it's okay. So you can see there's there's a little groove in here and that's for the sauce to sit in. That's what you get with the gnocchi board. But you don't have to do it with the gnocchi board. You could do it with the back of a fork. Just make sure there's flour on the back of the fork. Oops. And then just take it just like you did with the gnocchi board and then just roll it. It's a little harder to get a groove in a fork but you get those indentations and you get that round kind of a look. And that's what we're looking for, okay? So then just take these and add them to your floured board and just continue rolling these on the fork. Again, just put it at the top of the fork and just press down with your finger and it should roll off the fork. You, you might get a little bit of a groove and then you'll get some design on the other side. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions or need help or want me to demo again? So I just let them fall into the flour like so. <clears throat> and then I just pick them up, shake off the excess flour and then put them on the flour board. And so we just keep, keep doing that until all of our dough is, um, is done. I'm gonna do mine on my gnocchi board. And just cause you see me doing them and I'm quick, doesn't mean that the gnocchi board is quick. It just means I've done these a lot that I'm quick at it. And the more you do these, the quicker you'll get too. And please stop me or if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Now, if you wanted to purchase one of these gnocchi boards, um, I know you can get them on Amazon. You could probably get them like at uh, Sur La Table or one of those cooking stores. They're not very expensive. I think I've seen them on Amazon for like six bucks or something. I wanna say like 5.99, but they're not expensive at all. And so if you decide you wanna invest in these, the best Lucia, I think we lost you. Lucia, yeah. okay, go ahead and talk. I just bought that yesterday, so I don't know what's going on with that. Okay. Anyway, I was just going to say what would be really fun is invite a bunch of friends over, buy enough gnocchi boards for all your friends and have a gnocchi making party, but have them make sure they make enough that you can freeze some for uh, a night that you want gnocchi and you don't have time to cook. It's fun having cooking parties at home. I do it all the time. I've invited people to come cook because I don't feel like cooking because I cook all the time, but it's fun for them. just like it's fun for you guys right now. Except for when my microphone keeps dying. <laughs> now these gnocchi, uh, you could freeze them if you didn't want all of them. And the best thing to do for freezing is place a place plastic wrap sheet or parchment paper on your cookie sheet. Place them on the cookie sheet with some flour then only keep them one level high. Don't, don't double stack them or anything. Just keep one level. Put the cookie sheet in the freezer for about a half hour to an hour until they're all frozen. Then just take them out of the freezer and place the uh, gnocchi in a freezer bag and then just pop them back in the freezer. And 
Um, I was going to say something on my, my mind. Oh, make sure that you do put either a plastic wrap or parchment on the uh, cookie sheet because if you don't, they'll freeze to the cookie sheet and you'll be scraping them off and they'll break apart. So it's really important that you put some kind of a liner so you can get them off of the cookie sheet before you put them in the um, plastic wrap. And then when it comes to cooking, you don't want to thaw them out. You actually want to um, put them straight from the freezer to the boiling water. And we'll talk about that when we get to that part of class. Everybody doing okay with rolling their gnocchi? Anybody have any questions or having any problems? I'm getting complaints about consistency. Um, from really? The second cook in the, let's, cook in let's the kitchen. See what, let's see what's going on there. Well, oh, you I know what I'm doing? Reject, <laughs> reject pile. I put them in a reject pile if they're not you know, meeting quality control standards. Oh boy, I we get that. Groups <laughs> eat like to see your gnocchi. No, you don't need to see it. it. Yeah, we want to see them. Yeah, we need to see it. Um, Jeff and Summer Black, you don't need to see <laughs> my gnocchi. Going back on mute. Well, you know what I say to the person who complains about the gnocchi. They're the ones cleaning up the kitchen and doing the dishes. That's right. <laughs> I just say that because sometimes my husband does that, so. He doesn't mind doing dishes. His mother we taught know who be cleaning dishes at my house later. Who? Not you. Not me. That's right, you're rolling the gnocchi. <laughs> All right. Just pour him another glass of wine and he'll be fine. There we go. So are you guys making something else to serve with your gnocchi tonight? I'd love to hear what your guys' uh, other options are with your dinner that you're including. Go ahead. No, sauteing some chicken thighs with herbs. Oh, okay, that's a nice combination. I like that. I think so. Anyone else? That was a good idea, Mom. I don't, I don't have anything else going with the gnocchi. Me, I was thinking, me either, Auntie. Can we have some extra chicken thighs? <laughs> I'm freezing most of mine because I'm in Vermont. Everybody and bring their yaki over. <laughs> we'll have the yaki party. There you go. So it's yaki, not yaki, huh? I say yaki. What part of Italy are you from? <laughs> I'm from the south, from Calabria. How about you? A Tuscany. Oh, okay. Beautiful region. That's where most people go when they go to Italy is Tuscany because it's such a nice area. Yeah, I have a cousin in Florence. Yes, my cousin actually lives in Florence also. So we end up spending a week at his house because we fly into Rome and then we go down, we drive down to Calabria for the rest of the family. Oh, yeah. yeah. My dream is to rent a villa someday. Uh, my dream is to buy a house and go there for the summer someday. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, my family lives in this area. There's like three mountains. San Giovanni in Fiore, um, uh, Savelli, and uh, Castel Solano. And they're all three you can see. And so you can see all the towns. You go down the hill and up the hill to the next one. And oh my gosh, you get so car sick because the roads are like this. A lot of people don't really go to the southern part because there's really not too much there, but it is beautiful. And so, yeah, I would love to live in San Giovanni or um, Savelli because it's just beautiful. You're up in the hill and you got the beautiful landscape that you can see. And then you can even see um, Croton in the ocean if you're up high enough. And it's just beautiful. Oh, sounds beautiful. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with you. A villa in Italy. Yeah. There's been articles where they're selling uh, places for a dollar over there. 
Just yes, they are. Because, and I know even in um, San Giovanni, where my uh, relatives are, they have houses that have been in the family forever. And of course, nobody wants to buy them because there's no work. And yes, they're selling them for really cheap, you know? So just to get their town going again. Yeah. Do you speak Italian? No, a little okay. bit, but not much. Huh? Okay. Well, you know, in that region, Tuscany, you really don't need to because there's a lot of English speaking people. Oh, yeah. More in the south yeah. where we're from, there's not too many. So. So usually my husband's on Google Translate the whole time we're there. Ah, uh, yeah. Mine too. Yeah. How's everybody coming? You guys almost, uh, I've got about a quarter left of my dough. Where are you guys at? I'm opening a bottle of wine. <laughs> okay, go for it. We've got uh, about half half our dough. Okay, here. awesome. Lucci, I have a question. Yes. Um, if um, if I only wanted to roll out half of that from that dough, and I had see the leftover dough you have right now, could I just yeah. freeze that whole? No, unfortunately, you can't because what'll happen is, as you thought out, condensation will create on the outside and um, it'll be too sticky and you'll want to put more flour in it and it'll become really gummy mm -hmm. and it'll be tough and it won't be good. So unfortunately, if you wanted to, you could probably refrigerate it, but by the next night, you should roll it out the rest of it. Okay. If you were so too tired, but you need to roll it out all. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So it does take a little bit of a time commitment, but like you said, yeah. you can freeze them really nicely, you, you know, if, yep. you, if you're not able to eat them all. Yep. Yep. And, you know, each one is made with love, just like a snowflake. Each one is different. Now, if you didn't want to do all of it, then maybe just cut the recipe in half would be the only other thing I would, you know, suggest. But yes, you do, you do need to commit all the way when it comes to gnocchi. I like, do you find that the ricotta gnocchi are um, a little bit lighter, not as heavy as the potato? Yes, absolutely. And that's why I like doing the ricotta. But I do also like to, you know, mix it up and add, uh, like if I have butternut squash for dinner one night and I got a little bit of leftover and I got a little bit of ricotta, I'll put it together and I'll make gnocchi. So, so that's another option. And that's also light as well, not heavy like the potato. Lucia, have you ever tried making them with gluten-free flour? Just yes, like a one I have. I have, and as a matter of fact, I was in charge of our women's um, Christmas dinner for church, and of course, everybody has all these dietary needs. So, as a nutritionist, I try to buy, find the best that I can, and I did do a gluten-free uh, flour for that particular event, and everybody loved it. It came oh. out great, and people didn't even know that it was gluten-free. Oh, great. Yeah. What Thank kind you. of flour did you use? I happen to like the, uh, the King Arthur gluten-free flour. I find that just, that just for me works the best. It doesn't taste grainy like some of them do because the rice flour is not really, um, I guess, fine enough. And, and I, I've always had success with that particular brand. So that's usually my go-to for uh, when I do gluten-free uh, food or whatever kind, pastries pasta, whatever. Is there one that you guys like to use? I use Bob's Red Mill, just the one-to-one -one blend usually. Okay, and that works good? Uh, it works good for a lot of things, but not everything, so I definitely try the King Arthur. Yeah, okay. How many people is this recipe supposed to feed? Well, it just depends. If you have something else you're serving with it, 
Um, it could probably, like if we're doing chicken, like you said you were gonna do, um, it would probably serve six people. But if you're gonna serve just this, I would say maybe four. Um, it just depends. And then if it's all women, sometimes women eat less than men. So, but not always. When it comes to pasta, I can put my share away. I'll tell you that. Um, so it just depends on the appetite. Yeah. I but I would a, say anywhere from four to six. I, my son has a big appetite. He was looking at it. It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. <laughs> Well, we'll see after he's done half of his plate. I know it doesn't, it doesn't look like much, but these are filling. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget, they are going to swell because they're going to be in water. And You'll be surprised how, yeah. how full you'll get, how quickly they are. They are very filling. Wow. Yeah. Is it common that the ridges are often just on one side? So when it comes to gnocchi, that is what they're known for. Uh, there are other pastas where it's just a smooth round, completely round. Um, and those are actually called nudies. And they're called nudies because they are naked. They are the filling of the ravioli. And you just make, you just, cook the filling of the ravioli. It doesn't have that outer pasta shell like raviolis. But, they're, but they actually look very much like, you know, if you just cut your, your gnocchi like this, they look like that. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have very much flour to them. They're very light, but they are really, really good. They're super popular in Italy. Uh, I've heard of a few restaurants that have them here, but I don't see it very often here. Um, but in Italy, in the southern part, along the uh, Adriatic Sea, they do have what's called um, a nudie festival. And they, they, it's very similar to like the Gilroy Garlic Festival where they do food and all kinds of different garlic. Well, they do the same with the nudies. They just cook them in all different kinds of ways and flavors and yeah, it's a huge festival. So um, very well known for that, yeah. Okay, so I just wanna let you guys know, I'm done rolling my gnocchi, but if you're using a gnocchi board, there's a bunch of flour in there to clean it. If you de decide that you want to buy one, how you clean it is just take a sharp item, uh, a knife, or I'm using my bench scraper, and just go all along and just kind of get all that flour out. Give it a tap. And try to get as much out as you can. And then all you do is just take a damp rag or a dry rag and just get that extra flour off and that's it. Don't wash these, don't uh, submerge them in water or anything like that. That's all you have to do uh, when it comes to cleaning these and then you just put it away until you're ready for it the next time. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of clean up my mess here. Let me know where you guys are at. Is anybody else done rolling? No? I'm done, done rolling and shaping. You're done? Okay, awesome. Have some wine. Will yeah. be boiling water yet? Oh, yes, let's boil our water. Good point, thank you. I meant to say that earlier, too. Boil your water about four quarts, and I would add about two tablespoons of salt in that water. Okay, I'm going to do a, a camera switch here, guys. So hold tight while I'm. This camera's not. Oh, that's not my camera. Oh, that was my camera. 
can you see? Yeah, that's good. Like, Let go. Nope. Ooh. Nope. Which way? Go a little high, just up higher. Okay. Um, Hold on. Because you're perfect where you're at. It just needs to go a little bit higher. Nope, I can go over it turned up. Okay, there, that's good. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no, pan I think is okay. Um, but I want to show the pot when the noodles come up and how to look. To yeah. Tell it yeah. You don't have to show the pot right now because it's nothing there. All right. Should people be checking their sauce? Yes, yeah, so check on it. Get your water boiling. Sorry, I thought I said that, but I'm scatterbrained right now. <laughs> Is everybody's sauce doing okay? And anyone have questions on their gnocchi? So I got like a whole pan full. Let me show you. Do a zoom, we'll do a zoom here. There you go. Whole, a whole pan full. So. Go and ahead. it's okay if there's a lot of flour on here because we're going to dump it all in the hot water anyway and it's fine with that flour going in the water because it's going to fall to the bottom anyway so it's not a big deal and it's going to make your water nice and starchy um on the sauce yeah my, my carrots didn't get tender um, they did was your did you put it up high enough I had it on seven. It was okay. oh yeah, they should have gotten tender. Um, but will if I puree it, will that kind of yes? That, that good. Yeah. Is your sauce thick or is it thin? Thin. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, they should have gotten soft, especially if your sauce is thin on the thin side. How big did you cut the carrots? Um Teeny tiny. Wow. And they're really? still, and they're Her still eye. crunchy? Yeah. So crunchy, huh? Huh. That's weird. That is weird. I'll just I just added more wine, it'll probably soften them up. Okay. Wine can do wonders for things. Except one. I added French wine to my <gasps> Italian. <laughs> That's a real faux pas. What kind of French wine are you drinking? The one you brought me, Mirabella. Oh. oh. Not Mirabella. Uh, yeah, rose. Yeah, rose. Yeah. Mm. Mirabella. Mirabella. Um, I don't know where my playlist for this. Let's see. Oh. Did, did I hear rosé with sauce, or was that a very, very um, fine burgundy, Auntie? Pardon me? <laughs> did you put rosé in your sauce? No. Did you put rosé? <laughs> That's fantastic. Whatever's open. Rosé all day. Whatever's open. That's interesting. It'll be fine. Auntie, it'll be perfect. A rosé shard is a good combo. <laughs> That's good. Now, at, at Christmas, we make these things called pita. You roll this dough out like, like ravioli, really thin, and you take these nuts and raisins that you've marinated in orange juice, orange rind, um, cinnamon, and, and when you fill these things up and you roll them. But, but the point is, is that my dad makes them every year, and every time I ask him how to do the filling, it changes every year. It's pretty much whatever he's got in the liquor cabinet, 
where the bottles are empty and he's just putting in whatever. <laughs> some years it's rum, some years it's vodka, it's whatever's open. That's, what, that's what's going in. And it always but tastes good. It tastes good every year. Yeah. <laughs> I think our milkies look fun. No, they don't look great. What are we doing right now? Are we waiting? So we're waiting for everybody to roll their gnocchi out and we're waiting for the water to boil. Okay. Got both going here. Done. Right. Done, done. It would help if I turned the right burner on in my stove. Oh. <laughs> no. Rule number one. It's going to be a while. It's a new stove. But I'm, i got to get used to it. So anyway, it'll be fine. If your guys' gnocchi's boiling already, or water's boiling already, we can start. We don't have to wait for me. But hopefully this will be quick. I don't know. Where are you guys at on your bo boiling water? Boiling. Is boiling? No. No. Okay, if everybody's is boiling and you want to go on to the next step, we can do that. Does everybody want to go on to the next step? Anybody not? Let me know. Ready. Ready? Ready? Okay. So what we need to do now is take your gnocchi. If you put it on parchment paper, that's great. If you didn't, um, with the gnocchi on the cookie sheet, just put them, dump them in kind of careful. You don't want the water, the hot water to splatter on you, but get all the gnocchi in there. If your pot can take all of them, if it can only take half, then just put half in. And what you want to do is once you've dumped it in, you want to just give it one quick stir and that's it. Leave it alone and just let them cook. They will start to rise to the top. You'll see a few pop up and then next thing you know, they'll all be popping up. Once they all pop up, start the timer anywhere from three to five minutes. It's gonna depend on the size of the gnocchi you made. At about maybe three minutes, take one out and try it. Make sure it's cooked. It's not raw still in the middle. If it's still raw, give it another couple minutes uh, and then try it to make sure that it's okay. And then at that point, we can strain them out when they're all cooked. Make sense? Okay. Oh, I got water on the bottom here. That's what it is. There we go. All right. All right, so let me know if anybody has any problems cooking their pasta or they got a question. So once, and once you guys get your um, pasta, the, the gnocchi in the water, at that point, if your sauce is cooked, that your carrots are all soft, if you want to puree your sauce, go ahead and puree it. You can either put it in the blender, or if you have a hand immersion, you can use the hand immersion blender also, but puree it and get it to the consistency you want, taste it for salt and pepper. And then at that point, we will throw in the butter, the cream, and the herbs. And then again, taste for salt and pepper. But get it pureed to the consistency that you want it before we add those last three ingredients. Lucia, that apron is driving me crazy. I know. I tried to fix it before. Yeah, no, it looks it's ridiculous. <laughs> We're not letting you wear that anymore. I, I had, You're gonna. I had Lindsay try to fix it before in the back, and uh, it wasn't working, and I didn't want it to fall off, so I just let it go. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get it fixed for next time. No, I think next time you wear one of your cute aprons, because you can't even see the logo from here, so it doesn't even matter. Oh, here this, I wanted to sport the logo. That's everything. okay. Just wear one of your cute aprons. <laughs> Okay. Because I don't like the way this is <laughs> working on you right now. Okay, mom, thank you. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. That's okay. Hey, I don't see it from back there, so. 
<laughs> Try to take a little water out so mine starts cooking a little quicker. All right, how's everybody doing? I don't see anybody. You guys are either off eating or drinking or something. I think they're cooking their- There you are. No, I know. Um, do you know, could you, Lindsay, um, oh, gosh, I can get through there. Hold on. Just wanted to taste the sauce. Make sure I have enough spices. I need way more salt. Okay. Now, if, um, if any of you want your sauce to be on the spicy side, you can add um, chili flakes to it, right? Oh yeah, that would be a, a good thing to add for sure. Yeah, and you'll definitely want to taste your sauce. You probably will need to add more salt to it. Yeah. All right, oh, my water's slowly coming. We might just have to. Yeah, well, as long as I can help them with theirs, that's that's all that counts. Has anyone's gnocchi started floating to the top? No. Yeah. I'm I'm way behind. I don't. My water's not boiling yet. No. Okay. So the people oh, you're with me then. Yeah, the we'll people who nodded, together. the gnocchi, if your gnocchi is floating, then make sure once it's all floating, you're setting your timer three to five minutes, depending on how big you made it. So the other thing I was just going to say, oh, go ahead. Once it, it starts floating, that's when you start the timer? No, once, well, I'm, I, I was just saying that um, you'll notice that one or two will start floating and then all of a sudden the rest of them will come up. As soon as the rest of them come up, start timing about there, three minutes. Thank you. Yeah. So I was going to um, mention that when you are cooking with this pasta water and it's really starchy, which is one of the reasons that it's okay that that flour all falls in there because the more starchy, the better. But you could literally take that water. What I do is I will put them in ice cube trays, freeze them, and save them. So when I'm making a sauce of something else later on, I will take one of those ice cubes or two of them and throw them in my pot and it actually kind of helps um, thicken your sauce. You can also use that, as I was talking about earlier, instead of using olive oil, you could use one of those starch cubes, you know, to start sauteing your onions in. I mean, it does give flavor to your sauce as well. So I save that pasta water. Not always, but I do save it and I keep some in the freezer. You know us Italians, we save everything. We don't throw nothing away. <laughs> Pasta water is really good for home baked bread too. It helps it rise well. Yes, I have heard that. Uh huh. Oh. Always takes forever watching water boil. Yeah. Why is that? You can't look at it. <laughs> I know. So
So um, did you guys get your sauce already? Are you working on your sauce, either pureeing it or? No. Yes, we needed to puree ours. So. We we're still need to puree. Okay. Yeah, we're so starting. Pure, to okay. Okay, good. Okay. Are you going to puree yours, Lucia? You know, I was, but my hand immersion blender, something happened to it, and the blade is like making this high pitched screech. So we're not. They didn't want to scare you guys, so I'm not pureeing it today. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my blade. It's like I'm I'm a little upset about it. Because mm -hmm. I, I plugged it in to test it and I was like, what is going on? Do you wait to add the cream until right before you're gonna serve it? So no, so what I do is after I puree it, if you're ready to serve your sauce at that point, add it. Otherwise, I will put the sauce on the side, I'll even turn the heat off, I'll do everything else, and then if I need to reheat my sauce, then when I reheat it, then I throw in the butter, the herbs, and the milk, and I do it all at the end. Okay. If I'm so. going to freeze all of this, can I, do I want to wait for the cream and the butter and that, or can I make the whole, all the sauce and freeze it with the butter yeah. and the cream? Yeah, no, if you're going to freeze it, just make the sauce, okay. everything, Good. and then put it in your freezing containers. Great. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I forgot to mention to you guys, I know I keep looking up when I talk to you because I have a monitor set up there, but my, my camera is like straight ahead and I keep forgetting to look straight ahead and I look up so I can see you guys, but we're still trying to figure out the best place for the camera. So before I poke all these holes in the wall, it's just like they're temporary. So that's why I'm looking into the sky. <laughs> I'm looking at you guys. I just want to say super thanks because I made years and years and years ago potato gnocchi and it was it turned into like a sludge at the bottom of the pan and I'm already super excited to see how this is going to turn out. This is way better. Yay! Well, yeah, I'm hoping it's way better. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Good. Say hi. Say hi, Lori. Where's Lori? Uh, Lori's there. Oh, there's Lori. There. I see Lori. Oh, hi. <laughs> Bill's waving it. He, Hi, Bill's Bill. popping his head Hi, in. Hi, Lori. How did it go? <laughs> oh, we got some issues we got to deal on. She says yeah. I'm like a delay. We'll talk later when yeah. everybody leaves. So there's some there's some issues. Okay. Yeah. okay. These are my test guinea pigs. Oh, okay. <laughs> where's Where's the test Yankee? Yeah. Wait, wait. We're almost there. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any questions about their sauce? Is it going okay or? The only reason I uh, like to add the uh, milk and the butter and the herbs, because I don't want it sitting on the stove for a long time. As I mentioned earlier, the herbs can get bitter if they overcook. So um, that's why I don't want to mix it and then keep that sauce on the stove heated. I, that's why I like to add it right at the end before I get ready to serve on my gnocchi. This way I don't take a chance in it tasting bitter. And then when you plate, I'll just tell you this for when you guys get ready. When you plate your uh, gnocchi, if you're going to put it in a big serving platter, or yeah, if you're gonna put in a big serving platter, what I like to do is put like a couple tables, big tablespoons of sauce on the bottom, then throw the gnocchi on and then throw the sauce on top. This way the gnocchi doesn't stick to the bottom of the platter, which is why I like to put a bit of sauce on the bottom first. Um, if you're just gonna serve it all, you can actually, actually take all the gnocchi and put it in the, the uh, saute pan that has the sauce and just mix it all up if you like to do it that way and then just serve it in everybody's plate, however you like to do it. But those are two options. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. So I hope it smells good at you guys' house. Poor Lori, she's got no gnocchi tonight. I know. <laughs> I always get so hungry when I do these classes. I bet. All right, so my water's boiling. I don't know if you can see it in my pot. Okay. You guys have probably already done this, but I'm going to get ready to do mine. 
Lucia, um, are there, what kind of signs are there for doneness other than just taking one out and testing one? That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, that's the best gauge because, yeah, they're so delicate. You know, everything is cooked in here. So it's not like you need to cook it to cook, you know, egg or meat or anything like that. It's just making sure that the dough is heated up all the way through. Okay. And with every everyone's being a different size, it's hard for me to, to judge on that. So what's the texture of it usually when it's done? Usually it's it's soft. It's just not raw and doughy in the middle. It should okay. be cooked all the way through, yeah, and soft. All right. Anyone have any good news to report? We're still working. I haven't added anything to my sauce except for the vegetables. And what, when do I add the butter and the herbs and stuff? So I would add it right before you're ready to serve. So if you're going to serve this right away, when you see your noodles floating up, I would yep. start adding it then. Okay, um, so the butter. So I don't. I don't want you to add it too early because it will. It could get bitter by sitting on the stove. Okay. So if you're going to like reheat your sauce or keep it. Keep, keep it warm, you want to add it right before you get ready to add the, the nudies in, I mean the gnocchi in. So the, the herbs, uh, okay, add the herbs and continue to cook about 10 minutes, it says on the now. Um, 10 minutes? Yeah, I wouldn't cook it 10 minutes, not with the herbs the in herbs there. Go in with the butter so they don't do 10 minutes. Yeah, I would just do it all, all together. Okay. Okay. Sorry, little typo there. We'll fix that next time. Now, if you were putting dry herbs in there, the dry herbs, yes. Then you could, would probably want to cook it for the 10 minutes. But when you use fresh herbs, last minute. Hey, Lynn, how are you guys doing? We're doing fine. Um, it seems to be uh, a little softer. I'm not used to eating this kind. So it seems soft to me, but it's done. It Good. is done. Okay. And we're already taking it out. We have our sauce with the, the cream and the herbs in it. It's already done, pureed. So okay. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it sounds like you guys uh, were very successful. So congratulations. I hope so. <laughs> okay, nice to see you. Thank you. you. Uh-huh. So Lucia, where'd you go? Oh. Not, I think. There, we can hear you now. Okay, yeah. So what were you just doing? Stirring? Okay, so I was just uh, testing my uh, gnocchi to see if they were cooked. As you can see, they have floated to the top and they are, um, they're good. So I'm going to now add them to my sauce and let me show you how to do this. Here, I'm gonna move this back here. Everything's on one. Okay, can we see that, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, uh, for those of you who are watching, it just got a little bit thick. Let me thin it out a bit. You're going to use some of uh, using some pasta water. 
Yeah, I was going to, but you know what? I don't have my ladle here. So yes, I would have added pasta water in here, absolutely. Okay, so now I just have my strainer and I'm just going in. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot to add my herbs and everything. I'm gonna add my butter. And the cream, because I just want this to be a nice creamy sauce, creamy tomato sauce. And those celery leaves I talked about earlier, and then the basil and the sage. So we just want to mix that up until it's all incorporated. So if you do want to thin your sauce out, again, use that pasta water. I don't have a ladle here yet, so. And now I'm just gonna go in and grab my gnocchi and add them to my sauce. And just gently kind of toss all the gnocchi and the sauce together. Gnocchi in here. Shia, can you easily overcook gnocchi? I'm so afraid of uh, turning it to mush. Yeah, you can. If you, over, you just want to just bite into it, and you should, you'll be able to tell if it tastes cooked or not. Okay. I mean, you've had uncooked pasta, mm -hmm. so you'll know. And these are pretty delicate. You don't really need to cook them a whole lot. The only reason you have to cook them longer is because they'd be larger. Okay. But for the most part, you know, three minutes should be plenty. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then once your gnocchi are all cooked, like I said, just put them in your sauce and you can plate them, add some extra Parmesan cheese. Okay, now should probably turn it around this way. Okay. There you go, right there, right there. So now at this point, we can just add more Parmesan cheese. And um, let's see. I bought this great focaccia bread at the co-op today. I love the rosemary focaccia bread. So I'm going to probably a slice of this. Oops. Why up this? I'm going to get rid. So I'm going to add some bread. You don't have to if you don't want to, but why not, right? How's it going, everybody? Are we are we good? I'm good. I'm actually going to bug out because ours is ready to eat. So <laughs> all right, well, good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining the class. Hopefully, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. This is fun. Oh, thank you. I just saw somebody's pasta. That looked good. <laughs>